You do everything fast and fancy and flashy. You get in shape in four weeks. It doesn't work like that. Joint preparation is the most important and build up the basics. And after that, you can learn the skills you want. Yo, gorillas. Welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gor Nation. My name is Phil and today's guest is Adam Godrosi. I'm super looking forward to this interview to somebody who is doing a link and creating a link between calisthenics and gymnastics. And uh, with gymnastics method, he is teaching people around the world about the gymnastics method. I'm really looking forward to this one. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks that you uh, make the time for this interview. It's been like a really spontaneous uh, interview, like uh, at, at least the appointment. Um, I was looking forward to this interview already since a long time. Uh, a lot of people quite asked for it in the in the, um, in the comments, and also my colleague who is sitting uh, next to me, Daniel, was asking, "Yeah, can you please uh, interview Adam?" So thanks that you make the time, and um, yeah. Today we will talk a little about your uh, your viewpoint um, to gymnastics, and uh, I'm looking forward to to this one. Maybe you can give us like a short introduction, maybe also a long one. Um, but yeah. how how do you have the 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 connection to gymnastics? Who are you? What do you do? All right, so I'm trying to make it as short as possible because I have a like it's not a long story, but I have sub stories, you know. <laughs> Uh, the the beginning is really simple and for me the motivation was the same as to many people I guess that uh, and, and I also had this privilege that in my in my high school we had gymnastics classes after school because the one of the PE teachers did gymnastics and uh, basically he, he finished the same university that I, that I, uh, uh, I finished later and uh, he did gymnastics and he did these uh, classes after school and once they had a, like a show you know we had high school um, days with different programs and uh, and um, activities and they had a gymnastics uh, presentation you know and I saw those guys because it was funny because I, I knew those guys but everybody was it's four seasons in Hungary. Everybody wore, you know, some clothes or whatever. And I saw them doing like pommel horse and all that stuff. And I was like, man, these guys are tough. And mm -hmm. it, it was really basic stuff, actually. But I think same as I was an outsider. So for many people who, who just uh, see like a handstand or some basic gymnastic stuff that that I've learned uh, in in the classes back then, it it looks spectacular because you just see someone using his body, like you know, smooth as butter. They they do different skills and uh, and movements, and that you know caught my attention, and uh, it was really good. But our PE classes w were really good because we had different periods. And gymnastics was one period of, of the annually plan, you know. So we had like two months or, or a month when we did gymnastics. And uh, it was a really old school uh, gymnastics hall. I mean, like a, like a turnhalle <laughs> <laughs> with no equipment. And, uh, and um, we had to set up all the equipments. So I was actually about to go back because now I'm in, I'm in Hungary. And uh, I wanted to ask whether they have all these all those equipments and they use it because uh, maybe I will make a video about what we did before every gymnastics uh, session that we had to set up the high bars. Uh, mm. Only the rings were fixed, but it it was only from the ceiling, so not the professional ones. And the high bars, the 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 parallel bars were fixed, but you had to use like a special uh, thing with wheels to you know push it there and the mattresses and the pommel horse we had to and actually I have a pommel horse in in the gym here in Hungary that we use with four legs and like you know it, it's the really basic stuff and uh, maybe like from 200 years ago <laughs> so we we had to do that all the time and um, and my my uh, teacher saw me that I, I I could do stuff better because I had some sports background and he really wanted to have me in the, in the team, and that's that's another 
funny but short. I, I'll, I'll make it short. He had a he he, he had a ice cream shops, and he sold all these cakes and and stuff. And uh, he always wrote like little little papers to everybody who came to training that you get three uh, portions of ice cream or one like a Hungarian cake, you know. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> um, once you you went to the training. And you trained, and the next uh, training you got this uh, uh, little gift, you know, and okay. and many many guys just started because of this, and it was <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's cool. We started like this, but after this the third training, we were like, this is so good, and we we didn't even want the ice cream because I mean we we got and we always got some challenges like if you if you can do the muscle up on the rings, you can have like a hundred ice creams, you know, and it was wow. like the challenge was bigger than the motivation of eating ice cream. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I think if, if I go home, I still have these small papers that, you know, this student uh, is eligible to get these uh, ice creams. But <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny. So um, eventually I ended up, you know, going to the trainings, but mostly I, I was inspired by those guys to do the routines. And uh, I had to uh, trainers, one of the trainers, like I said, who had the ice cream shop, he was really nice and he was the positive. He he motivated us the positive way. He always uh, told us that it was good, but you have to do this and this and this. And the other um, trainer was the other way. It was bad, you know. Like <laughs> he was tough, <laughs> and uh, he did all the warm ups and the the strength training. So that's why. I didn't like the strength part because it was like <laughs> suffering, you know, <laughs> because that guy always just, you know, uh, pushed us really hard. And uh, the high school years and uh, until I finished high school, it was more about the routines and to go to competitions. And it was really good. We won all the competitions and, and um, we really liked that. But uh, the strength part and what I do now and what I promote now came much later when we grew up <laughs> you know and mm -hmm. uh, we went to we came to Budapest and uh, we we went to professional gymnastics clubs that we want to train <laughs> and uh, it was funny because they had first-class gymnasts who are like retired and and us some of the uh, the guys who he came from from another city, so we 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 didn't live in Budapest, and uh, we had the, that community in uh, in that city, and we came to Budapest and we went to this uh, gymnastics club and they they saw us to to train and every, everything and it turned out that they have this second class competition, so they started to prepare us to these these competitions. Uh, we we were like three or four of us and two of the first class retired gymnasts so we had a team and we attended all these competitions because basically it was a it was a, a university competition system because all the universities here in hungary had uh, um, gymnastics teams and i think our team and maybe another team was like an outsider not not a university but a club uh, a professional club had a second class team and went to the competition and uh, we competed there many for many years I think for like five six years maybe and it was all team competitions and uh, basically we had to do a routine on every apparatuses and uh, everybody so it, it, it's um, it has a score system that you can get 10 points on each equipment and the best individually also gets the the prize you know so we we had like mm -hmm. team competitions and individual competitions out of those routines so it wasn't like gymnastics professional gymnastics today that you you put together your your routine uh with the scores and you do the math you know like these are mm -hmm. my my strengths so I, I i'm really strong i can do all the static holds and and uh, bondings so i do a uh, um uh, routine like that or I, I'm, I'm more swing based so it was a strict uh, uh, plan and a strict routine that everybody had to learn and the best 
uh, who, who did the best was the best, you know. So basically, mm -hmm. that's how I got into gymnastics. It was like kind of from the side. And uh, until I did the, the competitions, we didn't really do strength training and all the skills, you know, like the, uh, we, we, we weren't interested that much in, you know, planches and all that stuff. And actually, I, I had a break in, in uh, this process when I, when I grew up to the level to decide what to do in life. And I went to a personal trainer um, um, course, and I also went to university uh, learning kinesiology. And uh, I started to, because I, I did university besides work. And before I had the, uh, the university degree, I did uh, all these courses so I can I could I could do personal training so I I started to train people in in a gym and that time I was doing the traditional fitness and bodybuilding training in a in a normal gym uh but you know gymnastics was always there and I I I uh, taught acrobatics also and after maybe like 6 months in the gym I missed the gymnastic stuff so much and I also wanted to so that that was my realization that okay I have all these muscles and everything but uh, because you know the competition stuff was still there and I had to go to the competition but that time mm -hmm. I could really do the the routines well so I was like yeah I can do it so I didn't train you know so like <laughs> 2 weeks mm -hmm. before I started to train to the competition I was like everything hurts you know I have the muscles mm -hmm. and everything, but I, I can't use my body. And that, that's when I realized that it's, it's, you know, it's not the best thing what I do. And uh, I also really wanted, at that time, because, you know, of, of the aesthetic part, I was interested in more, more in, you know, human flag and planche and all that stuff. And uh, that's when I decided, that, okay, I want to stop and I want to build up my body the gymnastics way when I, I look good. I mean, I, I don't look like a bodybuilder, but I look uh, decently, but I can still do this spectacular stuff. So I really, I was really looking for the the functioning, uh, the functional stuff in, in training, you know, because I got bored, honestly, to only work on my muscles and, uh, and I couldn't do anything, you know. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's when I, I came up with the idea that I, okay, I, and, and and I was in the same situation that many people are now, and uh, many of my uh, students uh, that they they want to learn all these stuff, but they are adults, and they know that okay, I'm not five years old, so I can't start gymnastics, and uh, I'm you know I was sitting uh, at a desk for ten years now, and I, I mm -hmm. I'm not flexible and stuff, but I still want to do something, so. It wasn't that bad for me, but uh, at the same time, I, I still had to build up the strength. And many people think that, okay, you did some gymnastics before, so it's much easier for you. But if we take the principle you know, the, of specificity in training, if you do just the swing elements and all the basic stuff, then, okay, it, has, uh, it certainly has some transfer effects, but it's so minimal. If you don't do a planche, if you don't do any planche uh, specific training, then just because you did, you know, p bar swings and uh, and uh, shoulder stands, you won't be able to do a planche. You still have to train for it. And uh, the main uh, difference between the professional gymnastics approach and and my approach is that they they start to train kids, you know, like at a really young age. And uh, the relative strength uh, in those ages is really, so that's why we see kids on the playing ground and they, they can do anything. Like, yeah, they just hang and they, you know, flip their bodies and all that stuff because the relative strength is really, really high when you're younger. And, um, and the approach of learning all these skills and the strength elements is, is way different than for an adult, you know, because they use many uh, spotting, so they spot to the kids when they learn all the planches, the iron cross, and all that stuff, and and it's uh, it's not happening when they are like uh, you know ten years old or whatever. They always wait for uh, 
when when they are like kind kind of getting adults like 16 17 you know because gymnasts still grow so <laughs> mm-hmm. uh you know kids as, as as kids grow i i know that uh they have many trouble to uh adjust the the load because they learn many things and then they suddenly grow a lot and they have to regress a lot to not injure them so the harder skills they they really teach like a later young age but still they are uh, uh, light and they can spot them and that's how they really build up the strength and and uh, they have the opportunity to to build a neuromuscular connection because uh, on a high frequency because they are there like you know twice a day and uh, they train like 10 times a week and uh, it's a totally different approach with this schedule than for an adult with two three sessions a week you know but as i told you when we we, we just talked before we started recording the conversation that i always trained three times a week and uh it was i think it was because my schedule was like that in in the high school um sessions we had three um trainings per week and uh it was just my habit i i had my training days and uh i just kept training like that and uh um when i started to work it was also uh an obstacle that i had to work and i had to work out so that was i think it was the the the, the same schedule that most people have with any other job you know i mean my job was to train people and it was more exhausting than to you know sit in front of a computer and maybe if i just sit i can train every day like like i do now because i'm editing the videos and all that stuff but <laughs> and i train more but back then and and uh and that's what i always emphasize to people who are questioning whether they can learn anything or not that i did the same thing like <laughs> i i trained three times a week and i built up all all my skills that i do and basically since then and uh it, it only changed when i moved to the us and uh i had more time because i didn't do that much training i i didn't train uh, people that much so i started to train more and now i train six times a week and uh it's more like uh more training but less intensity and less time you know so mm-hmm. i think for for a certain level if you if you want to achieve a good physique or you want to learn skills you really need to choose uh you you have to work basically i think the same amount you just need to choose how you schedule it you know it's obvious it's more 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 complex than that and uh, and uh there are some uh, i i have other thoughts on these but but the bottom line and basically in general uh you have to put in the work and you can do three sessions a week like one and a half hours or two hours or you can train every day for an hour or something like that you know so you can you you still have to work a lot but the schedule can vary and uh it only depends on your or your lifestyle mhm well that's that's interesting that's uh, something that we can uh, talk about later uh at what like a question that burned into my in my head the whole time at what time at what age did you uh, get into gymnastics like what was this um this period it was uh, 15 16 when when i started this high school trainings and uh like i said um the the main motivation for me was to to get a better physique because that's another fu- funny short story that i was a short and fat kid for you know mm-hmm. un- until i grew uh but everybody said like no because my my parents were shorter than me now so they were short and everybody said you you're going to be a short guy and you're going to have weight problems <laughs> you know <laughs> and one summer i just okay. grew you know a lot and i got skinny and i was like cool I'm not going to be the short fat guy. I'm going to be the taller and skinny guy. <laughs> so <laughs> so I started to train mainly because you know I I wanted to put on some muscle and and look better and uh I I really liked uh what they did at the classes. Well, 
Uh, and the, then the the ice cream of your uh, teacher came, yeah, and yeah. then uh, you became the the tall. <laughs> no, but uh, that, that's that's an unusual approach, like uh, with the ice cream. But uh, seems uh, seems to work for a lot of people. Then, uh, like a lot of your your friends back then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because you know it was like a, nice. it, it was a cool I mean it was a really nice shop and all that you know like because that city was a small city and that was the ice cream shop you know everybody went there and if you show up like mm -hmm. I have free ice cream you know like <laughs> as a kid wow. that was that was cool mm -hmm. but as I said um, some guys came just because of this but uh, um, it it was just a thing I think it was just like. A, little treat for everyone and we didn't give a shit after you know like two weeks because we, we just really liked the training mm -hmm. as as that coach uh did it is gymnastics like so popular in in hungary like um because i can't imagine or i can't remember that at our school there was like um the uh, like a gymnastics was a thing or something it was like Uh, part that you have to do in PE, but um, I don't know if there were like tournaments or stuff between schools. It's always been football and uh, like mm -hmm. soccer. Um, but um, yeah, like is gymnastics such a thing in, in Hungary? Uh, not really. It, it was um, even more back then. So my, my I think in my parents' generation, my, uh, my first trainer's generation, uh, Because it was more like the the Russian style um, P classes, and the, and as you said, we also had uh, you know gymnastics at the P classes. We had different periods, so fundamentally it was there. And I think uh, and and it had some hot spots. So basically, Budapest and uh, major cities had uh, you know professional gymnastics clubs. But unfortunately, it's less, less, less popular now. So, uh, and and also like soccer here is a is a huge thing, and it's also like a really good career opportunity. And um, I I I, tr uh, I I worked as a as a trainer at at one of these clubs, and I and I taught little kids. And um, and it was uh, it was right in front of my eyes, like. 30 kids came in and as the week and, and that's the thing you know like um it was like four-year-old and five-year-old kids and they were like all over the place and you had to educate them to do all these um uh, uh springs and and uh, crawls and all that stuff that we 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 do as a uh kind of a game you know so we play games but those games are really Uh, educate your body <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time you know like gymnastics is is um, uh, and if you want to be or if you want your kids to be a high-level gymnast it's a boring it's a boring work you know and it's it's less mm -hmm. playful than than soccer for example because you know it's 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 a ball game and everybody loves it and uh, so 30 kids came in And after a few months, you know, <laughs> 10 uh, remain. So basically, it, it's tough because even uh, other coaches, I, I saw that they had many, many kids. And uh, as kids grew up and, you know, realized, ah, yeah, my friends go to soccer and they, you know, like, and, and as they grew up, they, they hear all these uh, opinions and, and many uh, um parents are like if you if you do soccer you can be a good player and even here in Hungary if you if you're not the top if you're not in a top team but in like a <laughs> you don't even know the name of the city team you can still make a, mm -hmm. a lot of money you know because it's that uh, popular and they have many support and all these things so I think that's part of the reason why uh, gymnastics is not that popular because many people see the opportunity to make like a side side hustle you know because I, i know many people here who has a who have a job and they still play soccer and and it, with a team they just have to go to uh the game and they make money but you can't do this with gymnastics mm -hmm. even the professional level gymnastics here usually join the the military 
and they get a, a, a salary from the military as professional athletes and they still have to do some uh, military stuff but they can focus on the career and they can go to competitions and we have many and we had and have some um, uh, really successful guys also we had the uh, Olympic champion uh, uh, Christian Berkey in London on pommel horse you know and, and in history you can see you can see that uh, Hungarian gymnasts were successful so we should have a, a better gymnastics uh, uh, scenery here but unfortunately because of these because of you know hung, the Hungarian government and all uh, these um, organizations really really push soccer so everybody goes to soccer you know <laughs> so it's hard so it's it's not a huge thing unfortunately but we have some tradition loving uh, people like my coach was and we had gymnastics and that's that's how I got here so I think if if I wouldn't go to that uh, high school and I and I uh, wouldn't uh, met him then maybe I, I I wouldn't even do what I do so it was a huge effect on my life oh that's super interesting like so many things that we could talk about now with um with a situation of gymnastics and in Hungary not being like the the sport that somebody can fully concentrate on and make his living from uh, which is something that also like calisthenics is is struggling from that uh, like there are world champions that can't live from from being a world champion um but um yeah that's uh, maybe something for for a second episode mm. um because the the main the main reason why we are sitting today here is um the and also the questions on instagram that we received are um to um yeah to compare and to know like for us calisthenics athletes to learn more about gymnastics um you had like a lot of um athletes that you were uh, training with and looking up to um that you could learn from and ask questions and stuff like that so you have like a really cool insight into to gymnastics um, so before we dive into this um, comparison um, I have one quick question uh, which is uh, what's your uh, uh, age height and weight um, because this is something that's always like that, that I always miss and people ask in the, uh, okay. in the comments I'm 29 <laughs> and uh, but I'm gonna be 30 in October so pretty soon the triple X and uh, <laughs> in centimeters, I'm uh, 180 centimeters and usually 75 kilograms. I think it's 5'11 okay, cool. in uh, uh, like 5 foot and uh, 11 inches and uh, I don't know in pounds. But anyways, you can calculate. <laughs> Should be something around 160, yeah. I would say. Um, but um, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Thanks uh, for this. Um, so something that wasn't mentioned in your like story, which is super captivating and interesting, uh, was the word calisthenics. Maybe you can give us uh, the the short introduction on what's your connection to calisthenics. Like, um, how how I, how do you like? What is your connection to calisthenics? Yeah. So um, <laughs> calisthenics and the, the more popular uh, phase here is street workout. And that's why, uh, you know, many people are confused that street workout, calisthenics, gymnastics, uh, bodyweight training, and, you know, like, what's the difference? And uh, for, for an outsider, it's a, it's a legit question, to be honest, because, you know, uh, every, every sport has the name, and we know why is that sport is that sport. And uh, I always say that the overlap is really huge in all these areas and uh, my theory is that um, or my opinion is that uh, it's a totally different uh, discipline in a way that um, gymnastics is uh, is a more organized and it's a competition sport you know so it's I say organized because the traditional way of doing gymnastics is if you're a kid you go to the gymnastics club they select the people so it's like that's also um, a huge thing and I, I remember my my coach told me that uh, they they um, 
invited the parents and everybody and even the grand sometimes the grandparents to see if they are if they are uh, tall because if they are tall they said like okay that's not going to work because in gymnastics it's not good <laughs> if you're tall and uh, mm -hmm. they selected the kids and they also went to do the schools and uh, like even i don't know yeah, yeah to the primary school and they selected the kids so it was kind of we can say that it was a privilege to do gymnastics because if you had the right abilities they went there to to uh to host a class and they watched the kids okay this kid is is good and they uh, they can move well they selected the kids and they said okay here's the opportunity to do gymnastics and uh, obviously the the uh the best motivation f for parents was that he might gonna be an Olympic champion, you know, or a national champion, and 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 uh, not mm -hmm. not really the. <laughs> but I think back then it wasn't really like a financial stuff, uh, according to sports. You know, they nobody did sports because of career opportunity. It was more like for for the prices, you know, and for for the titles. But uh, they selected the kids, and then. It started as a as an organized education. They had the plan what to do with kids from age this to this, and with with the uh, with, with the youngsters and all that. With you know, they had the plan, and uh, I know many <laughs> many guys here, and that, that's my connection to calisthenics. That uh, yeah, it, it was a really it, it's a really good memory that I saw these guys coming to to the gymnastics gym because we we had the opportunity i mean in that club where we went uh we were the tr i think we were the transition between the professional gymnasts and and the guys who wanted to do gymnastics and learn all the the skills that we wanted to learn and uh the guy who was the head coach guy he's an obviously an, an elder <laughs> man <laughs> But he was really cool, and he was like, uh, "Yeah, we can do classes like that, and uh, you know, and obviously they can, they could make money." We we uh, we invited all these guys, and and uh, we had some friends, and they called their friends, and and more and more people came to the that club, and uh, that's when I met the guys from the street, and they were like jacked, you know. <laughs> I was like. What do you do? What do you eat? What? What? what, what? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, we we just go mm -hmm. to the park because, as we had the opportunity to go to the gy gymnastics gym and we had all the mattresses, the foam pit, and all that stuff, we always trained there. And and uh, as I said, we wanted to learn, you know, double backflip from the rings and all that stuff. And we obviously did some strength part, but that's when I saw the 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 difference. Uh, and and then the freestyle wasn't even a thing. Um, and they just did the calisthenics like uh, sets and reps, dips, pull-ups, push-ups, all that stuff. And uh, back then we didn't even have that much parks than we have today. And I, and I'm really glad that in Hungary it's a huge thing. And we have many. Uh, we also have like manufacturers based in Hungary. And uh, I'm glad that the cities and all these uh, uh, all, all like villages have really good street workout parks and it, it became a thing mm -hmm. and uh and those guys trained in like you know playgrounds and stuff but as they did all the the basics and in uh i think they they uh and they also used weights and all that stuff so they they were really in good sh <clears throat> in good shape and uh as as you said calisthenics guys like the the OG calisthenics guys are more interested, more and more interested in gymnastics stuff, you know, and that's why that's why I'm glad that I met these guys to uh, to see how how can you build your body with your with your body weight even like more because I think that if if you if we say that cal calisthenics and gymnastics gymnasts look good, but if someone does like like the OG sets and reps calisthenics looks much better because it's like more strength and and uh, hypertrophy um uh centric you know like you focus on that only and uh as as i always say in gymnastics they 
they just build the muscle only to an extent to be able to do the routines well so they don't want to build more muscle and the calisthenics guy wants to be big and strong in those you know exercises and they don't mm -hmm. really want to do um uh all the all the gymnastic stuff but and and then we see the freestyle uh part of it which i think grew a lot in the past few years and we see that it's getting really close to gymnastics but the origin is different because it started from the street and and with different communities and the gymnastics started as like a traditional way and you know and uh and i think calisthenics and street workout is is the second chance <laughs> for many guys like us <laughs> to 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 show that you can learn all these stuff and uh i mean not all these stuff because you obviously won't learn all the gymnastic stuff but you can learn what you really want you know because i'm sure that most of most of these people who want to learn um, or, or want to do calisthenics they uh, or or even the freestyle they don't want to do you know the the catch off and all that stuff that gymnasts do on the high bars but they do they want to do like a kip they want to do uh 360 which is not even gymnastics skill but you know you can learn that <laughs> it's not uh, it's not the and that's the that's the the bad thing about the gymnastics approach that i experienced the same and all these guys who came to the gymnastics gym and I met them, they said like, yeah, we tried this gym, that gym, that, but they always uh, told us that we are too old and just forget about it, you know, because I mean, it sounds bad, but it was really that bad. <laughs> they, 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 many mm -hmm. gyms weren't open to welcome, you know, the, the average guys or the calisthenics guys or anybody other than kids because they focus that much on the competition, we, we, we can, you know, uh, I can understand. They don't, they didn't want any disruption, but uh, in that club that we, we went, it started like that. And uh, I think now because of COVID, it's still, uh, it, it's um, stricter again, but at least we had the opportunity. But even in Miami, I, I, uh, I know that they have some open gyms and I know that a community there goes like street workout or calisthenics community goes there to to practice, but it's not you know like yeah you can go anytime you want and you can use the gym. It's like twice a week and it's uh, really late, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. that's why you really you really can't take advantage of the gymnastics stuff because more gymnastics clubs are focused on the competition level. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's like holding back to so many people from starting with gymnastics because it's like uh, it seems like a such a high entry barrier sport. Um, also, like when you talked about the 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 tough coach uh, that or the tough teacher that you had, uh, not, not <laughs> yeah. the ice cream guy, but um, the uh, the other one. Uh, like this is the, the I don't know. This is uh, an image that I have in my head from from gymnastics. Uh, like um, being really um, uh, competition oriented. Uh, yeah, on on performance only. And um, street workout is like the 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 way you yeah. can be free. You know, like freestyle. You can train like even if it's not freestyle, but you can do whatever you want. It's like much more free. You can do it whatever, wherever you want. You don't need like a foam pit yeah. and uh, the, the gymnastics gym. Um, but I think that's a that's a yeah. um, um, form of something was born because of the need. You know, and I think street workout and and calisthenics was born because of the need of doing these skills and and the this kind of movement and practice so um i, I think it's beautiful because you know like here in hungary if people wouldn't want to do uh street workout that much we we couldn't have all these parks but obviously if there is a need mm -hmm. there needs to be an answer and that's the answer and um and i think it is, is this is good because for most people it's perfectly enough and basically that's my my mission to to teach adults gymnastic stuff what they can uh, take out of gymnastics and use 
for health and for performance and aesthetics and uh, prove that you don't have to start at a young age and you don't need the fancy gymnastics gym to do the gymnastic stuff that you want to do, you know? Because I honestly, I, I, I didn't meet any people who said like, I, I want to do like the double flip, double twist from the high bar. They always say like, yeah, I, I want to learn a handstand. I want to learn a muscle up and all these things you can learn in the park or even at home if you have the equipment, you know, if you have a bar and that's it. And uh, I think there is a process and, and the, and that's uh, something that I, I want to show people that there are really important things in gymnastics that you should use and not learn the hard way than many of uh, of the guys who, who started on the street, you know? Because uh, that, that's, that's what I said, the, the, uh, the professional support from a coach wasn't there. They didn't have the opportunity to go to the gym. So they were like, okay, we're gonna watch some videos and we're gonna start doing this and this and we'll see how it goes, you know? So it was totally uh, experimental. And uh, I think that that's, that's a good uh, transition that you have gymnastics, you have calisthenics. Like, I don't wanna say that uh, you have knowledge and you have no knowledge at all because I think it's much closer to each other mm -hmm. now, but there needs to be um, some education and knowledge from gymnastics to be used in calisthenics to be successful because the other part that I met uh, many times with my uh, with my students that they started to do calisthenics and they got injured and they stopped you know and then they saw uh, they watched my video mm. and like yeah 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 oh I, I skipped this one I skipped this one so maybe I'm gonna you know give another shot and they came to me and they said like, yeah, I had a shoulder injury and I, I, I uh, tore this muscle and all that stuff, but I see that it can be built up, you know, properly. So <laughs> let's get it, <laughs> you know? And I had many people who, who got yeah. injuries and, um, and we built up their bodies that they can do the dream skill and they look good and we could build up everything because, you know, also the, the mainstream fitness, uh, uh, mentality doesn't help that you do everything fast and fancy and flashy and uh, you get in shape in four weeks because people have the, this expectation that okay then let's do that I mean I'm all about to get in shape in four <laughs> weeks you know <laughs> just let's get it but it's not it, it doesn't work like that so uh, yeah I hope I answered the question it's super interesting and definitely something that uh yeah has a lot of truth in it that uh this transition of knowledge and of experience of this like old sport uh gymnastics old and experienced uh people uh with uh, much more structure and um yeah uh, experience that these this transition to calisthenics is happening and people don't have to reinvent the ve yeah, wheel yeah. we say like um they don't have to reinvent everything and um uh, do everything the hard way so this is why like also this podcast exists because um it's important that calisthenics um a like number one is that calisthenics athletes uh, themselves spread their knowledge and they don't want to keep it for themselves but um, everybody is sharing their own experience so we can grow as a community and as a sport and knowledge gets structured and um, shared um, but on the other hand it's super valuable that um people like you share um experience and share insights into into um yeah i don't want to call it the big brother of calisthenics because um, this would be like the next question that i have like um, don't you think it's um do you think it's justified to say that uh, gymnastics is the big brother of calisthenics and that we're like um in a in an inferior weaker position as a sport um to to gymnastics because just of the the long history and all the experience uh, of mm. gymnastics i think for to some extent we can say yes i mean if we uh if we uh talk about you know the things that we talked about now that uh, it has more uh, knowledge collected than we can say but at the same time as you said like 
there is no new thing under the sun. Basically, many of the calisthenics athletes figured out the the, the right way, you know. And I think the the um, the main thing here is is uh, uh, knowledge of an uh, of anatomy and knowing the human body, you know, because um, also in gymnastics, it's not like all the gymnastics clubs and coaches were like highly educated you know they also have the history of uh, of getting better and better and using different terms from the the latin language of the uh uh like from from doctors and therapists you know because i'm sure if we go back like 30 years they didn't use like protract your scapulas and <laughs> do posterior pelvic tilt, then mm. just do this and that, and they, they taught the mm -hmm. kids how to do it. But uh, I think this uh, uh, like physiotherapy knowledge and, and the overall knowledge of the human body and anatomy, which really went to gymnastics, because you know it, it had the opportunity to, to grow knowledge more easily because more and more professional professionals were were involved you know like the professional gymnasts have uh, therapists and and they massage and they had the massage and all that stuff so those people started to talk and they said like you know and and i think this is how they developed this uh, uh this language that they use and we use more and more uh, to understand the flexion extension uh, and all these terms that we use uh, today, and I think even in calisthenics they use it. And I think that's that's uh, the, the the key. And I would say that um, science or 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 the general knowledge of of uh, knowing the human body and the the functions of the body is the big brother of both. You know. <laughs> And it's like uh, the, mm -hmm. the difference between calisthenics and, and the gymnastics is what we talked about. It's a different background and, uh, and uh, different goals and, and, um, and the origin is different. But I think for both, the big brother is, is science <laughs> and to understand the human body, you know. And this went first to gymnastics and from gymnastics it went to, you know, as, as um, everything. Like uh, if you go to a university best case you you know the the most up-to-date knowledge and then it goes down and you know if you if you're a physiotherapist and you write an article to facebook then it goes to the everyday person and this is how you educate uh everybody you know makes sense you also talked like uh which comes in combination with knowing your body and knowing physics and um science and stuff like that um should calisthenics athletes to maximize their progress should they um copy or like take over uh, methods from gymnastics like spotting like spotting mm -hmm. is something that i've never seen in calisthenics like um or uh, also all the the um the the equipment yeah with foam pits and um yeah like putting this foam on a bar when somebody does a flip you know like there's a, this coach who makes sure that uh the person doesn't hurt himself stuff like that um should a calisthenics athlete who wants to maximize his progress also use these um techniques and these tools Absolutely. from gymnastics I think, uh, everything that helps to reach your goal should be used you know and if and everything that uh, makes you uh, progress safer, it, it, it makes sense, you know. Like, why would you risk your health? Or uh, yeah, like yeah, use, using mattress and and that that's what I see. Like, uh, I I was judging in in uh, competitions in Hungary, uh, street workout competitions, and I I remember that okay, the first one didn't have any mattresses and the second one had mattresses and you know like because it, it just makes sense like um it looks cool and everything but if if you injure during a competition like you just uh we we always had have to keep in mind that the goal is to enjoy the training and do it for a long period of time as long as possible and it it uh it's not worth to risk 
anything uh, health wise to just look cooler on, in our competition you know so i think uh, these uh, like like the safety mm -hmm. stuff makes sense and the the different methods like the spotting and you know like there are different methods in 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 general in bodyweight training that we can't really measure like accurately the progress you know and for example spotting is is one of the worst <laughs> because i can't tell how much i help you and you 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 don't feel how much i help you it just you know it's it's totally experimental but it's working and uh we we can rather use elastic bands with different uh, strengths to to measure progress but it's not like in in uh, in weight training that you you can measure okay it's like 20 kilos then uh, the 25 kilos or whatever you know but i think all all, all the tools should be used that uh, make sense you know okay Interesting. Um, so what other methods are there? Like uh, we talked about spotting. Is there anything else that you can think about uh, that um, you sh think people mm. should use more? I think the, which is like, oh, it's the idea, not exactly a method that uh, can be used mm -hmm. and, and uh, someone can benefit from is the if when you uh, periodize your training you know because they have different periods when uh, they do more strength they do more skills and all that stuff and the basic structure i think is really useful and that that's what i teach also that uh how can you structure your workout um to to maximize your or your progress and um and to think about you know long and and that's that's it. that's another uh, good thing i think because we can say that okay gymnastics is not a sport that they do lifelong but if we see how many years they spend in gymnastics then we can say it's a long term thing you know so um the gymnast you see doing an iron cross at the age of 20 basically prepare the body if we if we say in general for like you know 15 years so it's it's a long-term thing and that's what i also emphasize that um we always use uh numbers to to add a frame so okay like this is a four-week program this is a six-week program or a 12-week program but you still need to think uh long term and and uh in a lifelong process and i think that's that's the uh, real advantage of being a, a hobby um, a athlete, you know, like a <laughs> part-time athlete, that you don't really have the stress mm -hmm. to prepare to the Olympic Games or, or any competitions. You can do whatever you want uh, and in the pace you want, and you, you, you're not stressed out of, of the uh, deadlines, you know? And uh, and the period uh, the periodization I think is important, uh, and um, use different programs and always uh, update your schedule in a way. I mean, it it can be it can be the same exercises, but you can play with different factors. You can play with the uh, um, uh, the tempo. You can play with the weights or. Uh, you do it explosively or all that stuff because we all know that um, all the basic uh, exercises are are the best but you can still modify something that gives you an, another stimulus to to improve you know uh, that that's one thing that uh, that I believe in and, and what I do and uh, I teach that joint preparation is is uh, the most important and everybody should start with that and keep in the program to avoid injuries and build up the basics well. And after that, you can learn the skills you want. So that's why I, I, I uh, promote to have skill block in your training or have a skill training, uh, a dedicated skill training. And after that, everybody wants to be stronger and uh, and be uh, uh, more, you know, aesthetic. 
and these these are the methods you can you can really use that I said that if you if you just do the basic exercises and you use rings you use different time under tension you do the explosive variation or you use weights and in the weights it's it's a, like a whole new world that you can progress more and more and you can do deload weeks you can uh, you can progress in in the different periods and that that's what i mean by periodization that uh, that you can you can switch up things but work on the same goals and uh, make your training more enjoyable and versatile and um, and you and nobody is in a rush <laughs> so you have the time you have the freedom to do what whatever mm -hmm. you want just always try to to be better in a smart way and you don't have to uh, you don't have to kill yourself in every session, you know? Mm -hmm. Super interesting. Um, could we go through like um, one example for, um, yeah, maybe like a, a workout schedule with also with a small um, side note to the pre uh, pre yeah, that's pre a hard word. <laughs> okay uh pre yeah. <laughs> yeah damn it you know what i mean like uh with, with uh, integrating the periods of the the workouts um can we like go through one schedule for a month or like i don't know how how long you do these for for three months uh something so we take like um as an as an example somebody uh, like an average calisthenics athlete um who wants to learn who is like stuck at at a tuck front lever five seconds and uh, like a tuck planche uh, five seconds and he wants to uh um to achieve the the full front lever and the straddle planche um what like what could one one uh, schedule the, look like for and, him and uh what worked for for uh, uh many of my students and also myself is to uh, structure the workout in a good way you know um specifically for the planche and, and front lever you need to you need to train every aspect of of the skill to to give your body the best uh, stimulus to to improve i think that's important so um the workout session itself uh targeting uh, th that skill should be uh well structured and using the uh the exercises and and using those uh uh so so the energy you have in a in a workout to use and distribute the energy in a good way so you shouldn't start with the low intensity and uh, the, the so you shouldn't start with the the supplementary work and you shouldn't start with uh um and that that's one thing that i i uh, i always uh, promote and emphasize that if you want to learn a static skill then you you want to improve your static strength you know so it's the specificity of training that um because i i i don't say that it's impossible obviously it's not impossible that uh, but me, uh, a few athletes say that they only did front lever negatives to learn the front lever but i think there is a better way to learn the front lever than just do negatives you know and uh and if we if we mm -hmm. talk about specificity it's not specific at all <laughs> to learn a static skill with a negative you know like i mean you you need to train the static uh, part of it and uh, and have a have a spot in your in your session to uh to work the static uh, progression and uh and that's in my method that's what i emphasize if you want if it's a static skill then you should um choose uh, static progressions first and and uh, give your best to the static and then you can still do uh, all the other stuff the negatives the uh, to strengthen the muscles and to work on hypertrophy of the muscles that you uh, that is involved in that skill and do the supplementary stuff and uh and it's also like um there is no um so that's why i i i i only have 
uh, examples or like sample workouts for for these skills and and um, for for the static skills I also I, I uh, I'm I'm rather explaining to to my students how to think about it you know and how to approach that uh, training and how to change it if it's possible and if it's needed because I think there is no perfect plan that fits everyone and will teach you the planche. Like, I, I wouldn't uh, write down like a, a year schedule or whatever, you know, like, I, and that, that's why I, I, uh, I, I rather explain that if you, if you got stuck with three sessions a week, uh, progressions, then you should, you should uh, uh, increase the frequency and use like GTG, you know? And so that, that's the thing that if something is not working, if you got stuck, you need to change something, you know? And maybe it's, it's a deload because maybe you're overwhelmed and your nervous system is just too exhausted to push itself to hold, you know, more than five seconds. Or you have a missing link that you need to emphasize more. Like uh, just an example uh, from a post that I, I just posted on Instagram that, for example, for me, front lever, front lever hold was like five seconds really stable. And uh, I realized that uh, uh, my core needs to improve more if I want to hold the, the front lever more because my back was strong enough. But uh, I always felt my, my hips sagging, you know? So I started to do dragon flag. I, I, I was good at dragon flags, and I started to do dragon flags with some weights, so like ankle weight, or you can grab like a small dumbbell and and uh, put between your feet, and uh, and I hold that, hold that, <laughs> and uh, and that mm. that held me so much that like I was focusing on on this for like a four week period, and after that my front lever went up to ten seconds easy. And, and and that's the thing that uh, and, and that's why I think that it's um, uh, and that's why I, I did I do the live Q and A's in my group that if something is not right and if you can't figure out then if it's worth to talk about it and show me and all that stuff to figure out what's the problem because I figured out that my problem was the core and I paid more attention to the core and it helped and. Uh, and that's why the question is like five second tuck punch hold. We we need to see what are the missing links, uh, or it's just uh, the end of a period. So even if it's uh, it's unconscious, maybe that five second is your period max. You need to chill, just do some planche leans and and regress for a week, and then try again, or. You just need, you you you're, you you need extra stimulus because you're fresh and everything, but you you need more frequency. So basically, you you increase the frequency and you get better at like that. You know. So um, I think uh, if we talk about like coaching, and I I saw that in gymnastics too, that um, it's hard to figure out what what the real problem is, but uh, we always need to try to uh, solve it. And eventually, we try. We find the best way to solve the problem, and uh, it works. You know. So mm -hmm. the bottom line is to change. If if, if something is not working, True. change. And uh, and uh, that's uh, that's another big um, thing that I always uh, tell my students is to to be more self conscious and monitor everything, like how you feel, and you don't have to write it down or whatever. You know, like. You just need to think and do it daily. Like, okay, yesterday's training was a bit too much, and I think it's it's really worth to to use uh, different um, tools and gadgets that that we have now, as as uh, uh, the, with the modern technology. For example, I I measure my HRV uh, daily. So I and, and and you know the more you do, the more. Uh, you see the trends and you 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 more you learn more and you know uh what the situation is you know so i think that's that's for example the hrv is a good uh, uh thing to 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 watch and uh 
you can figure out like, okay, I'm a bit overtrained, so I need to, you know, regress or chill. And, um, and see the different uh, um, things like how you feel, uh, uh, maybe you have it, so it's it's a really like um, uh, for for most people who use like an online uh, guide or train from YouTube or or whatever they really need to be more and more self conscious to to figure out these these plateaus or involve a trainer or coach uh, and they can help uh, but it's part of the process and it's it's a part of the process that can't be missed I think. So another thing that uh, plays a big role in, in gymnastics and maybe also in the fact that you said that calisthenics athletes, like, at least for me, it feels like that we as calisthenics athletes, we are like hurt and we have like injuries much more often and frequently um, than gymnasts have. Like, um, I, I don't have the comparison to gymnasts. I just see that uh, every calisthenics athlete out there uh, feels like that he has like some uh, inflammation in the joints, like tendonitis, uh, wrist wrist pain, stuff like that. So um, maybe it plays together with the the, the mobility point but um, why do you think like calisthenics athletes have so um, many injuries i think it's like uh, the same answer that uh, we talked about already that they don't have the knowledge or the idea uh, how much to train or or you know like i think it, uh, the training needs to have a, a a basic structure and even for for many people even warming up is a is a thing that they don't do, you know? So even if they would just warm up and, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the other thing, like, I think there are fundamental, uh, missing points that, um, of how a general warm up looks like, you know, because that, that's what I, I saw in, in the, in calisthenics that, uh, okay, I can do push ups easily. So that's the warm up, you know? So once you have the muscle up and mm -hmm. it's easy, then that can be a warm up, right? <laughs> but it's, it's, I have a different opinion. So I <laughs> still do the, the traditional gymnastics warm up, and that's something that probably I do because I have that, uh, uh, small background and, uh, I got that education to, and, and the, the habit itself that we always started with a warm up, you know, and it was, a. And it, you, you know, it was uh, with the trainer, so we were like uh, the traditional gymnastics warm up is like they they do like one, two, three, four. So it, it's all, it's also like a, a thing that uh, improves your skills because you you hear the rhythm, you have to uh, move for the rhythm and all that stuff. So these are um, under emphasized or underrated uh, parts, small parts of uh, gymnastics that uh, many people can get benefit from, you know, like in, in general. So like m all the movements affects your brain and your mental uh, endurance. And if these are, um, have this, you know, g this, this little spice that it, it's like a rhythmic stuff. You have to learn how to circle your arms and your your uh, how to do uh, bend forward and uh, all, all that gymnastics and that's why I always teach that uh, gymnastics um, warm up because it just improves your uh, your a abilities you know so thoroughly and so many ways and uh, it oils oils the joints it prepares the body the muscle elasticity the body awareness the nervous system, your um, your um, cardiovascular system, your res res respiratory system. So everything is just that, that's why it's a warm up. You know, it prepares your body and prepares you mentally and physically mm -hmm. to to do the workout. And that's that's uh, a feedback of many of my students. Like, yeah, as we did this warm up and this prehab, the prehab is another part, but as we did this warm up, I just feel like I can move more freely and I'm like, I'm ready, you know? So, and, and that's what I saw that many, uh, guys from, you know, in the parks, they don't really warm up. They just start doing push ups immediately. They, they do all the, the stuff they are working on immediately. 
and they skip uh, progressions and they are trying you know the muscle up so hard that it's uh, it, it and and i always say that it's uh, like like lottery <laughs> do you win the injury or not because mm-hmm. i know many guys who who are not injured and uh, they they learn things in a risky way but they are still like healthy but i know more who are who learned the hard way so like injury and inflammation and stuff so they had to mm-hmm. they had to uh, take a break so i think it's just something that is needed and uh, and everybody everybody should learn and that's why i started to do what i'm doing because it's just a message that you know everybody can benefit from these things from gymnastics and and from some basic you know physical education and uh if 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 just everyone should do if everyone would do a, a warm up before every workout and uh that's my achievement that i i say it's worth it because it's going to be better for them you know mm. mhm do you have like a, a warm up routine or uh, like yes. a video that we can link uh, in the description yeah, I have, uh, um, so that five minute yeah. gymnastics warm up on youtube which is the i mean i i do the the um, the whole thing and it can be uh, follow along and i also explain all that stuff why it's beneficial and um why it's needed so it's on youtube and and uh anybody can watch it Cool. So we will put that in the description for everybody who is uh, interested in in warming up more efficiently. Because uh, with this advice now, I think we get the the general thing that um, push, doing push ups is, is not like a, a good warm up for for a workout. So I don't say that uh, it can't be used as mm-hmm. uh, as a part of a warm up, but um, because obviously if you do push ups with a weight vest, then the basic regular bodyweight push-ups can be a good warm-up set for example but i always and and that's that's something that uh mm-hmm. they teach in the university or any i think in any uh, trainer course that there is general warm-up and the specific warm-up and i and i put the prehab in between those because the general warm-up is is just to move around your body and your joints to to have the benefits that I, I briefly mentioned, and uh, and the prehab is um, is part of a warm up, and that's why I say prehab because it uh, it prepares your body to be in support, for example, in, to be on a ring support or or just in the push up. Because many people who work uh, on the computer they already have some wrist pain because of you know because of the uh, stiff um, uh, hand position and stuff, but uh, e- even if they just uh, support on the ground, they feel the wrist. So that's why we need to prepare all the joints to be able to do like a push-up position, you know. And uh, even if you can, and because many of my uh, mm-hmm. my students who who join, they say like, yeah, I tried this program and it's easy. So I, I skipped that program and I went to the other one, <laughs> you know, and I always say that it's not about the intensity and it's not about the difficulty. Mm-hmm. The point is everybody can do these exercises, but the benefits are not sexy. So it's not bigger muscles and, you know, like you getting more shredded, but you, you will have healthier joints and stronger joints. So you won't have pain later when you do your workout and that that's that's an important part and the the funny thing is that uh, all can be done in like 15 or 20 minutes so the general warm-up and the prehab routine which is the the thoroughest prehab routine that I have is it, it all together it's like 20 minutes you know and if you train for an hour you still have 40 minutes to do anything you want and the stretching as well so um, it's uh it's something that everyone should do i think and uh, and af- only after that should come like okay i do some push ups to warm up you know because for a more 
intensive exercise, it's a good warm up, but bef even before that, your body needs a more fundamental uh, movement uh, routine to move around the joints, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, this, this uh, video. Uh, so we will put it in the description so you can uh, like check it out um, and get more specific um, yeah, knowledge about that and uh, follow it along. Um, yeah, we're slowly coming to an yeah. end of the interview. I talked uh, too due much Due to today. a lack of time, which is unfortunate because, uh, uh, <laughs> no, it's like so, so valuable and so interesting. Um, so I can imagine definitely like doing a second episode, um, about like more specific topics and, um, the specific questions that uh, like happen and uh, are in the comments after this interview. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks already. And, um, as, uh, in every interview, we always have some quick questions at the end of, uh, of every interview. Um, what's your favorite My food? My favorite food if, if, uh, it's, uh like we don't see the uh the health stuff then burger <laughs> and if like clean food that i uh mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I could eat nice. for the rest of my life is some kind of chicken breast like prepared you know like even if it's just the the natural way uh with rice <laughs> and salad you know like the the original clean package. I really like the taste. Yeah, the typical. Nice. That's the clean and the typical is, is the other. <laughs> yeah. What athletes are inspiring you? I don't have you? specific athletes. I, every athlete in, inspires me where I can see that uh, he's doing from the heart, you know? So I, I, I can, I can tell, should I tell a few athletes? <laughs> yeah. I have many. Yeah, why not? But, uh, Do that. Just from the top of my head, I I really like uh, Gaji, Gaji Atarov, uh, Daniel Lysens from like this community. Uh, so not the gymnastics community, but from gymnastics, I uh, I personally knew him. Uh, Sylvester Chorline was a, a really big inspiration for me. He was a, an Olympic champion in Sydney on rings. So yeah, I mean many you know I, I if i just scroll your page on instagram page every athlete inspires me so everybody inspires me who i can see that they are like all about it you know nice so that's why i just mentioned mm -hmm. a few big ones but you know even like i i i i, I see your instagram and um, many athletes i don't know or or uh, I never heard about them, but they are like really inspiring because they are like cool and uh, strong and all the things that you can you can be inspired by, you know. <laughs> so it's good. Nice. Do you have a favorite skill? Yeah, I have many, <laughs> but these are the two like static and dynamic. Okay, it's uh, cool. Flange and uh, and <laughs> pull or push. Mm, both. <laughs> can I say both? <laughs> I like both. <laughs> No, only one. Uh, then <laughs> no. <laughs> if if you would have to decide, like for the rest of your life, mm. you can only do uh, like continue with one. I hate that. Which question. one would you would you choose? <laughs> maybe pull. I like the one arm pull ups and chin ups. So <laughs> you know, it's maybe the pull. Last question: What's your message to the calisthenics community, or what's your message um, in general to all the listeners? The the main message is what I just talked about <laughs> uh, all the time. That um, you know, I think <laughs> do your research and and uh, and try to make your your uh, progress as easy as possible with with using all the knowledge that you you can access. I think that's that's something that uh, we we have many uh, resources, even for free on YouTube. And do your research mm -hmm. before you start something new, because I'm sure there's there's gonna be uh, great resources from all over the great uh, YouTubers and and athletes. And thanks to these uh, podcasts that you do that uh, they can benefit and they can have a much easier time just because of that information that they listen.
Wow. Nice. So yeah, um, we finally get uh, to the question, how can people, like somebody who is now with us for one hour and 22 minutes, uh, he will think, oh damn, like Adam is so smart and he has so much value and like he talks about these groups and I want to get into this group. Um, how can people apply for coaching? Uh, how can they learn from, continue com. learning from you? So my website uh, is the best way and uh, that's where I have my uh, my plans. I don't do personal one-on-one -on -one coaching at the moment. Um, so that the message that I said, uh, I just said, applies here too. That uh, most, I, I, uh, in my experience, most of the people who join already watched many of my YouTube videos, and I think if if uh, they watch the the YouTube videos and then join and they understand and watch the explanation videos and uh, and uh, the website then because my goal is to make this process as easy as possible you know and that's what I'm I'm striving for all the time even if maybe you know something is not perfect and you have questions but generally you have many info on YouTube and on the website that is already giving you enough information to start and I think for a for a basic uh, level to to have the joint preparation and the uh, the basics built right uh, until you don't have uh, until you don't start a specific skill which is an advanced skill and and you get stuck and you get stuck and you need help until that most of my people are are just uh, fine and they come to the Q and A's. I mean, many people don't even come to the Q and A's because they don't have questions. So that that's uh, that's I think uh, is a good thing because uh, we can, as trainers, we can we can always educate people enough to to get started and to get to a be decent level because um, you know everybody has different uh, uh, needs. So I think for the vast majority of people, I my programs can can be enough to to reach a good joint health and uh, to build a good physique and only those people come who who have specific problems like I'm really trying to do this and that but it's not working and they send the video to the group and I said okay so this is the missing link and you probably skipped that part so like you know like things that they mm -hmm. should have done but they just mm -hmm. you know overslid or something but um, uh, in the groups, we in the group we have conversations on general topics. Sometimes people ask uh, opinions, and uh, and if they have specific problems, they just post the videos, and I comment and I help them. But um, it's it's there as an opportunity. But do your research before you ask <laughs> before, because if you ask something that uh, is obvious and obviously there and it, the <laughs> the video is there then you know it's just annoying to to repeat myself since if, if you watch that 2 minute video it, it's there so i, I don't want to be rude or anything but uh, uh this do your research stuff because from my my end if if you think my way i tell you that this is my uh, my uh, intention to to prepare everything to be there and uh, and answer the questions as many people have but if it's already there and if you if you find the right uh, source then um, then you don't have to ask you you already know what to do it's like a book if you have a good book uh, like a good instructional uh, thing how to set up this furniture and everything is there then you don't have to ask you just need to do the process you need, you need to do the work <laughs> But uh, there is no question because every, everything is there. And that's what I'm striving for. And mm -hmm. I know that it's impossible. So that's why I have the group that if someone has specific questions with the process that got stuck or whatever, then I'm there to help. Cool. Nice. Definitely makes sense. Fully understand you. And uh, yeah, awesome. So uh, thanks for sharing. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for being here and accepting the invitation. So um, yeah, I think I learned a lot. I hope uh, everybody also who stuck with us uh, also learned a lot. And um, yeah, 
if you like this episode uh it helps a lot if you give it a thumbs up and uh, adam you can end the episode i look forward to the next episode <laughs> part two thank you so much